What's up guys, Weston Smith back with a new bait for you guys. Check us out, man. We're gonna be throwing the Guggen Baits toad today. Stick around. <laughs> Two bass, all right. Like that's your TV. <laughs> forward, forward. And there you go, guys. A successful shock out on the lake, man. Guys, so Devin and I are out on the boat this morning. We have brought out the brand new Guggen Baits Toads Man. Again, hopes for some top water action right along the lily pads at this private water fishing spot you can find in the link down below. If you want to become a member, you get a place to fish for yourself, all to yourself for the entire day. Private water fishing has over like about a hundred locations across Texas and Oklahoma for you to take a look at. Stick around because with private water fishing we're going to show you exactly what they do to help manage and maintain this place. They're going to be shocking it here in the early afternoon. We're going to show that process to you guys. I think it's going to be really cool so stick around for that somewhere in today's video. But we're throwing the Guggen Toad today. We have just got it rigged up. What I did is I went weightless Texas rig 4 aught Guggen Squad hammer hook. I've got some probably 50 pound braid on here. It's been so long since I've spooled this reel up. It's kind of in the mix between a frog which would be like the most subtle approach and the buzz bait which is kind of like loud clanky etc this has got a little kick so it's got that bubble trail nice disturbance and you can really get in the thick stuff I can go back into the grass and not worry about it with just this single hook right there work over the pads no problem I think it's gonna be a fantastic session on this guy let's go ahead and try and secure some top water catches all right here they are man the Guggen toads let's rig one of these up and use it for the very first time. I have never thrown a soft bodied frog like this. I've just always thrown the standard frogs, you know? You know? The walking frogs, the popping frogs, the ones that already come with hooks. This one's gonna be a little bit different. It's got these feet that are attached here. Detach that. And now we're gonna end up putting a hook in him almost like a Texas rig, just weightless. And I'm gonna plop him along the top. But what's different about this is he's gonna have a little kicking action, right? These legs are going to start kicking on the surface. I think it's going to be a fantastic topwater bait. I've never fished one of these before, so I'm just pumped to get it hooked up. Let's go ahead and find a combo for it to go on. All right. I'm just going to be honest. I am learning with y'all this morning on how to fish these. There we go. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Again, I've never fished a soft-bodied frog like this. Let's have some fun here. I'm going to Texas rig it. Bada bing, bada boom. Look at that, okay, perfect. I'm thinking, this is a four aught, I'm thinking a five aught hook might be a little bit better just based off of this indention right here. Basically that hook is not getting nothing but the fish. You got these ribs on the side of this guy. So this is the green pumpkin pearl color. Got just a little bit of flake down here, natural green on the top with little flash on the belly. Guggen logo up top. Oh, look at that, little kick, little kick. <laughs> Interesting, that's funny. All right, let's see how this goes. It's got that nice little bubble trail. Those legs are kicking. Look at this. You can cast way in the back 40. Oh, there we go. First fish ever on the new Guggen Toad. <laughs> yeah, first fish ever on a soft body frog, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yo, how cool is that? How cool is that? Minutes in. Fish is back in the water, man. How cool was that? Let's get this thing re-rigged and we're gonna get back in the thick stuff. That is so sick. I think I'm addicted already. By the way, if you guys are trying to get addicted to this right here, tell you what, you can get these in November at Carl's Bait and Tackle. That is where they're gonna be. Go ahead and sign up as a member so you can get them on the cheap. Uh, Devin and I are signed up for Carl's Club and you already know that's where we get the majority of our baits. And it's gonna be the first place you are able to get these Guggen Toads right here. Boat. Oh my god, Guggen Toad! <laughs> Jesus Christ. What is that, a two plus pounder right off the bat? Second fish in here on this thing? Okay. Second one of the morning on the Guggen Toad. Second fish ever on the stop frog. So cool. Yes, guys. Right at the boat, too. Who would have thought? Crazy catch. All right, we got to keep working this thing. I'm liking this little froggy deal. Jesus. 
Oh god! There we go. Come on. Got him. <laughs> All right, man. On the run. They are loving this deal. This is so sick. I was. I'm happy there's even a top water bite this morning. But to be getting it on a brand new soft plastic that I've never thrown anything quite like before. These ribs. I can't get over it. These legs are just kicking. Got him. All I need is a little four or five pounder, secure the deal. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. While I'm over here throwing the toad, Devin is uh, <laughs> rocking the big bait. And oh my gosh, that fish is like the same size as that bait. <laughs> Bro, what are you thinking? That's not, it's not gonna end well for you. You're so little, I didn't even think there was a fish on it. But little did I know. There was. This is crazy, we saw more of the sun at some point. Oh, oh, he's got it, okay, there we go. I didn't think he had it. I thought he, I thought he went for it and missed it. That's classic. Oh gosh, almost dropped the rod in the water. That's how you do it, Weston. <laughs> what is that, four, four or five on here? Nuts. This is some of the most fun. I am digging these frogs, man. Or toads, or frogs, or frogs, or toads. <laughs> oh God. Dude, it's so sick. I mean, the grass is like, it's like sparse grass and hydrilla in the middle. I mean, there should be some giants around here. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Devin's throwing the citizen. She's got a big old six inch swim bait on here. There we go, back to back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say they like the green pumpkin pearl color though. Cannot go wrong with this guy right here. Yeah, there's three racked up. <laughs> Six or seven connections and we've missed, I wanna say we've only missed two on this guy right here. Not bad for a single hook. I mean, this thing's got a better hookup ratio than almost every other frog I throw. Tell you what, I can deal with this. Hey, Brandon, I got an extra set over here. You want it? Yeah, I got you. It's been a minute, man, but you guys see that bass fishing dude on the video today. He's got himself a hog over here, but he's in need of a little set of pliers. We're gonna hook him up for <laughs> I haven't even seen the new whip, dude. You make this thing look small. We'll try and do this on the on the fly here. Bam! You, oh, you're spotlocked. Oh, he's spotlocked. <laughs> he's spotlocked. He's spotlocked. <laughs> It. Uh -huh. <laughs> Brandon's on the spot lock over here. He's on the autopilot 120. You guys know that all too well over on our channel. Working our way back to the Lily's man. We're gonna see if we can't frog us a couple more. Ooh, what y'all know about these different colorways we about to break out. We got some blue baby on deck and some black flash. We're gonna try something a little bit different. I just wanna showcase some new colors for you guys on today's video. So let's go ahead and try the black flash. We're just gonna go from light to dark on this one right here. Look at this guy. I think that kick and tail is what's bringing them in from a ways away anyways. Maybe they just do love that green pumpkin pearl color. We're about to find out. Hey guys. There we go. Goodness. Where'd you go, bud? <laughs> Melissa, where'd you go? Oh, while well, Weston's having fun with the frog, I'm uh, busy catching. Oh, nothing but giants you see here. Still using that citizen. Bye, bud. There we go. Come here. Oh, he came off. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Okay, color don't matter. Black flash. <laughs> Getting it done, boys. Okay. So it turns out they just like this frog. Wow. Nice one, man. There we go. First one on the black flash color. You know what? Look, while we seem to be on a roll, and I, I don't want to jinx it, but it's too late because I just said that. Let's break out the blue baby just for fun. Look at that right there. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Got to tell you, the green pumpkin pearl, though, it's going to be tough for me to get over how many hits I got on that. It just, uh, it's almost like the first color you use in a bait that you start getting bites on. I don't know, you got that confidence, you really like it. That's why, and that's another reason why I'm wanting to switch up and not just throw green pumpkin pearl all day, is because I want to feel good about any of these other ones here. 
and I'm not just talking about I'm not just talking about the toad. I'm talking about any bait in general. You know, if you have an opportunity to just uh, throw something different, try out a new technique, see if another color hits, and maybe it becomes your new favorite. Uh, you got to do that sometimes, but also that confidence boost, just knowing that they'll hit on multiple colors so you don't feel bad when you run out of your green pumpkin pearls, man. Third color of the toad this morning, we're going to see if it gets blown up on. There we go, finally. Ooh, he's fighting. Devin's got a decent one. Devin's got another one on the foot. Nice. Choop, choop, choop. Man, this thing is definitely getting broken in. Look at all those munch marks. Munch marks on Melissa. All right, bye guys. Yep. All right. Blue baby. <laughs> yeah. First one on the blue baby color though, guys. Check it out. They do not care. They just want this bait. Okay, there we go. Another. I was looking away too. <laughs> All right, hook set right in the side of the mouth though. Just what you want. Blue baby color, raking them up at this point. Let's go. Switch back over to the black flash. I'm just kind of feeling, it's, it's, this thing's just so different from anything I've ever thrown before. It kind of intrigues me enough to want to uh, rig another back up and get some more catches on it. I actually really like this color. This is pretty slick. Got like some purple, red, and silver flake on this one. Hooks it's right there in that slot again. Can cruise over whatever you want. Before we started rolling this video, I threw the buzz bait for a minute. It's what I had tied on for a top water and they weren't really hitting it. Maybe the blade was a little too much and yet this guy right here, just those kicking feet, a little bit more subtle. Might do it on these days where it's a little bit, see how it's kind of calm in here? I like to throw that buzz bait when there's a little bit more going on, but this seems to be doing the deal. Oh, he got it. That was like a subtle hook set. I didn't even, he just kind of slurped it under. He didn't even hardly explode on it. Black Flash doing it again. Is that a fish? Oh, oh, you got a bite, huh? Yeah, but he doesn't have it. You sure? Yeah, he got does. It. Just got kidding. Got it, got it, got it. Crank, 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 crank. Oh. Hey. Oh, hey. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. Say, girl. All right, I'm over here having fun with the frog, and then here comes Devin with the mission fish. <laughs> Yeah, Lee. First cast. Oh, look at her. It just flopped the hook on you. Good thing you kept that tight. Holy smokes. Wow. I think we break the scale out for that one. What do you say? <laughs> look at my first decent size one of the day. Pretty good. We're going to go ahead and get her on the scale. And I just made a switch up. I'll show you what I was throwing here in just a second. All right. 311. So literally uh, three, it's like three and three quarters. Yeah, three and three Almost, quarters, yeah. that's exactly what I called. Barely hooked too. Yeah. That hook fell right out. Ooh, good deal. Let me show you guys what I was using. Let's get this girl back in the water right quick. Yeah guys, so this is the 316 Mission Fish. It was my first cast actually with it. Uh, I was casting it out, I was letting it sit, kind of messing with my GoPro. Really awesome bait. It's uh, got a weight in the nose, so it almost sits as a, kind of a Texas rig or kind of a, like a jig if you would. Uh, popping it off the bottom, line through bait, so the bait goes up on the line when a fish is hooked. Really cool bait. Get you some. Ooh, missed him. What happened there, Weston, what happened there? Up. There we go, right in the lilies. Yeah. Somebody in the comment section, let me know how many fish I have caught because I have done lost track. I think one or two of these maybe has even been off camera. <laughs> They've just been smoking this thing right here. I've been like losing track of, am I recording? Am I not recording? So, forgive me. All right guys, so let's talk details about the gear you wanna throw this on and also kind of more specifics on the colors. I'm rocking, I think I spooled this up a long time ago, like I said earlier, maybe 30 pound braid, so you'll get some better casting out of it, but a lot of guys are gonna be throwing into the thick stuff like I am, these lily pads thick grass with like something 50 just real heavy okay the braid's gonna float you don't want to be throwing this on floral carbon it's gonna sink on you that's not gonna do you any justice when you want this thing on the surface those legs kicking really causing that bubble trail that disturbance the vibration to draw those fish in from a ways away like that I'm sure they are when they come and hit this thing on a lot of my catches today so far now 
when it comes to the hooks just go weightless you don't have to put a weight on the front of this obviously you want them working on the top so just a weightless texas rig setup i've just got a palomar knot tied to a four aught hammer hook carl's bait and tackles got you hooked up for the line the baits when they drop and the hooks you get everything you need from there i wanted to talk a little bit about casting and retrieve so you want to make sure as soon as this bait hits the water you're reeling it because again, you want those legs kicking. You want that to be working in your favor from the second the bait hits the water. A lot of times you're targeting the grass edge, boom, right on a fish. You want the you want those feet kicking. You don't want to sink down and not get the action and the disturbance that you're using this frog for. So if you cast and you don't have it reeling right away, it's going to sink on you. Now I'm reeling it and then it takes a second for it to get to the surface. Sure, it'll work. You're going to catch fish regardless. But, but just keep that in mind. As soon as it hits the water, you want to be reeling. So if you're using a right-handed bait caster, and you've got to make that switch try and do it in the air that way you can start reeling right off the bat if you are uh, like i'm right-handed but i'm using a left-handed bait caster it seems to be a little bit easier because i like to cast with the right hand then reeling with the left hand makes it really good specifically for a bait like this when you need to be reeling right off the bat so just keep that in mind if you're using a right hander you want to cast switch hands in the air thumb it get it right where you want and start reeling right off the bat all right Let's see if we can't get some more fish on here. We talk gear, we talk retrieve. Uh, basically, I would say you want this thing as working as slow as possible while still staying on the surface and maintaining that uh, kick, all right? Uh, you, could, you could certainly just burn it back and it's just a big old splash. It almost looks like nothing, okay? So as slow as possible while still staying on the surface is what I'm talking about. That's what you're looking for with this bait right here. Let's go ahead and try and get some more fish, guys. Off camera right after I saved the clip. How about that? <laughs> Just got done talking to you guys about the tips, saying let's catch another fish. Saved that clip, and then wouldn't you know, we get a little blow up. Black Flash doing work, man. See you, bud. Gonna go back to blue baby for a second. Got to keep these bass guessing. Never know what color Weston going to throw in the water. Oh, did you get it? Is it a bluegill? I don't think that was a bass. <laughs> That's one thing you don't want to do too. If you see a blow up and you don't think the fish has got it, just kind of keep the same pace. The fish thinks they just missed that uh, frog that they're trying to eat and they go for it again sometimes. If you just kind of like, if you get a blow up and, you, and it kind of misses it and then you're just like, oh, I messed that up and just burn it back in, then that fish doesn't have a chance to try and actually go and hit it again. So try and do your best if you miss a blow up, not go crazy and just keep staying steady with the reel and i know i didn't land that fish but he did hit a second time and it wouldn't have happened that way if i started burning it back after that first blow up Ooh. god that one scared me a little bit <laughs> coming up to a nice little point over here got this guy off of it there we go absolutely crushing it by the way this thing will absolutely catch giants i don't want you to think it's just catching small fish when the bigs are roaming the bank they're going to hit it i believe uh, lunkers tv caught his first double digit on a solid like uh, pl soft plastic frog just like this so take it from me you won't just be catching little tykes you'll be getting the bigs and i expect to get a couple here today as well we're just going to keep on throwing it as long as this will persist man the top water bite is going nuts it's 11 o'clock this morning guys <laughs> Crushing it. Oh <Okay. laughs> god. Nice. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> Dang. There we go. What you got? Uh, the dark yeah. Oh, he came off. There we go. Nice. One in the hell. Hey, dude. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll resume after lunch. <laughs> All right, y'all. The Guggen Toad has been crushing in every color. I mean, we've gone through a couple this morning. Thanks to how many bites we have been getting, the thing absolutely slays. I'm sure we're gonna get some more use out of it today, but I'm gonna stop and take a quick break to show you guys how we shock and maintain these properties. So let's go ahead and cut it straight to it. Typically the modeling is more Florida influence. All right guys, so we're uh, launching the boat. We're gonna get to shocking a few of these bass up and actually netting them, putting them into this uh, live well right here. 
and then uh, kind of just diagnosing the health of these fish, the size, the weight. So that private water knows exactly what they need to do with the property as far as food goes for the stocking, whether we need to be removing some fish. This is all part of the process. This is the motherboard. This is the on-off switch start reset. Okay. That's the pedal. When he's on it, we're on. But I have the master switch. I can stop it and okay. or turn it off. And so are we going to be going around mainly the edges where it's yeah. like a certain so, depth, right? So we can chalk anything six feet and less. Six feet and less is what this is going to be essentially be effective at to bring these fish to the surface right. so that we can analyze them. Probably just going to get a little filming during this portion, y'all. Uh, Devin and Fishing the Lone Star are going to be getting these things in the net. My catch on TV. My catch on TV. Fish number one secured by Cole. Couple of bluegill. Coming up on a little brush pile. Two bass, all right. It's got that blue right there on the gill plate. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, this is a Camelot Bill bass right here. Sometimes it's more pronounced. Uh huh. Sometimes it's above the gill plate. You got a good eye for it too, but yeah. And you can see it's more, it's more yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta get away now, but I... So we're coming across them a little bit deeper. As these fish are getting shocked, we're seeing a lot of the bait come to the surface as well. It seems like the gill in like the three to five inch size is what these bass are feeding on primarily. So what we need to be throwing, man, this time of year at this lake is those three to five inch little bluegill swim baits, I think you'd probably be raking them up. Because a lot of times, they're not necessarily running from the sound or the sight, but they're, what they're running from is the electrical field because they can feel it. So when, uh, whenever we sneak up on them, sometimes it's better. Dang. Yeah, the, uh, the better fish are out here. Steve Alexander, Private Water Fishing. We just got done electrofishing Sulphur Bluff, Deer Trail Lake, and we shocked up about 75 fish in the last uh, 40 minutes or so. And here are a couple of the ones that we shocked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assess the fish health. We're gonna weigh and measure them. Much like humans, fish have a body mass index. We call it a relative weight. This fish is right at 17 inches. Scott's gonna weigh him. Scott, what does that fish weigh? Three. 6-0. Okay, 3 6 -0. Oh. So that fish at 17 inches should weigh 2.73 pounds, but you can see he is so far over his weight that fish is about 120% of relative weight. That fish weighs 20% more than a fish should weigh. Now that for us that's a great thing. We love bass that are fat. Yep. So these fish are extremely healthy, nice. lots to eat. You can see the, the definition of how full that body is and then the, we call the shoulders of the fish right there. So that fish is in great shape. And there you go guys, a successful shock out on the lake, man. First time, what a blast. That was actually pretty killer. Very informative, I had no idea what goes down and we'll give you guys a little brief, uh, brief recap back at the house. Healthy fish for the PWF members to come out and catch. And this has been a fun day out here in the water and learning what goes on behind the scenes at such an awesome lake like this. That wraps this one up guys. If you guys wanna check out private water fishing for yourselves, literally fish one lake all day, all yours, totally private man. You have the opportunity to check the link in the description. We've been having an absolute blast catching numbers man. Take the family out there, take the kids out there. It's all about catching fish and having a great time. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed staying till the end and watching us shock the pond with private water fishing. It's something that I hope to learn a lot more about as uh, we continue the fishing videos on this channel and just getting to be involved in the process was fantastic it taught me a lot all in hopes to make the fishing better for private water fishing members but also landowners 
the landowners, that's a huge perk because they want their ponds well managed. Half the time, landowners seek out private water fishing to not like uh, create an income by allowing people to reserve their pond or lake for the day, but really because they want the pond managed and that is what private water fishing specializes in. They check the size, they check the weight, they say, okay, do we need to stock more fish for these bass to consume? Do we need to stock more bluegill, more shiners, more this, that, and the other, right? They want to make sure there is a perfect habitat for these fish so that not only are the members of this service happy, they're going out there, they're catching fish, they're catching numbers, but also the landowners who are oftentimes fishing enthusiasts themselves and have family over want their pond to be in the best shape as possible. So that was a little behind the scenes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We got a lot more coming your way. We got some, I'm not even going to tell you what all is right here, but we're going to go through it in the next couple videos, guys. Subscribe, drop a like, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much. Peace out.